Well, it's become almost impossible to scroll through your social media timeline and not see a political post. As if the post may upset you enough, just try reading the comments section. Dr. Melissa Spirik is a professor in the Department of Communications at Wright State University. And we're talking about this because this is becoming so common now that people are actually defriending other people, sometimes close, sometimes not. Um, and it's creating some, some really heated conversations on social media. So what is your take on just the, the landscape of social media as it pertains to political discussion? What we already know in terms of tracking not only people's use of the social media, but the media in particular, that people tend to seek out like um, like-minded people. Right. So they tend to reinforce each other and ideas, but what ends up being different is the intensity, but the closeness of the friendship overrides the political views, but when it overrides it, it depends, are these individuals are speaking and seeing each other face-to-face -face in addition to the social media use, or is this mostly a mediated friendship relationship? And we're finding that's a big predictor on whether or not people will unfriend each other based on political views. You'll see these types of, of debates in sports or about favorite whatever, but why is it about politics? What is it about politics that makes it so fierce? Your example of sports is bang on target in terms of loyalty, but we tend to accept fandom yeah. with sports as, okay, that's the way they, way they are. When it comes to politics, there tends to be a need to change the person's mind, yeah. persuade them, have them think differently. And it does go back to the concept, are we listening and talking with this person to persuade them or to listen and understand? And that makes a significant difference upon is the tipping point that someone will give up, pass on. But I have to point out that it's also an opportunity to hear from someone who's not in complete agreement. So we see it's not proportionate, but a small number of people becoming closer because they are able to speak right. bluntly about their differing political views. Yeah, I've seen examples of it being something that's positive, where you can, it can really create a good conversation, but there's so much of the time where it creates some, it brings out some deep hatred. And, and some really nasty conversation. How do we go about having a constructive uh, conversation on social media? Understand that you're not necessarily in all likelihood not going to change someone else's ideas that they're not shared with. At the same time, use it as an opportunity to listen or learn from someone else's experience and views. But again, don't have the purpose of the communication be to change or convert what they're thinking and how they're thinking. And you're more likely to have the friendship or the relationship continue without having to the point of cut it off or to ghost them. Do you think it's a good idea to to defriend some people if they're not necessarily a family member or someone that you're close with? It depends on what else what else abounds with the relationship that, okay, what are the other values, contributions? Right. So it can be a tipping point that, but not just walking on the person. It's like, look, our political views are so extreme. I just don't think we can continue with this relationship, but I wish you the best. Yeah, at the very least, you could use that mute button and then they don't see that you're not friends anymore. So that's exactly. certainly an option too. Dr. Melissa Spirit, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate thank you. It. All right, let's head over to Greg.